Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the monthly chart of the WTI West Texas Intermediate Crude U.S. American Oil Contract, and that's over the Dow 30 Industrial Average. Now, we're going to talk about how something really big is on the horizon here. I think this chart kind of tells you that if you look at it closely uh, there's a lot of divergences in this chart and don't be distracted by those uh, for example we have a big divergence area here in the chart but rather than looking at the divergence areas I want you to look at the directional moves and you can see that uh, the uptrend was intact there in uh, the crude oil and stocks were also in an uptrend we had a kind of a pause here in stocks kind of a pause in oil we got a resumption of the uptrend in oil followed by a resumption of the uptrend in stocks and they both topped you can see that stocks topped first started down and then oil completely collapsed and we got that crash that led to the financial crisis around the election time. This is going to be important. I've talked about the election cycle before around the the election time after an eight year period because we've had multiple eight year uh, presidential terms. Now, the period that we're at right now, you can see that the stock market is maintaining an upward trend. There's no question about that when the Dow broke into new highs. We can also see that oil is definitely in a downtrend. I was shocked to see. I don't even remember seeing. I had to go back to the Wayback Machine and check a bunch of charts. I don't remember seeing uh, $26 oil back in February. but. Uh, I, I don't remember us uh, going below the lows of 2008, but we did, and the downtrend seems to be resuming. So even more important than this gigantic area here in the difference, this is totally unprecedented uh, between the financial markets and this key commodity. And what is it portending? It's portending something very very ominous that's coming is it a crash in the stock market is it a hyperinflationary blowout in the commodities or is it going to be both so i want to look at this zero hedge article talking about donald trump and what he's saying about the fed because this is kind of shocking stuff coming from a presidential candidate but first i want to listen to this uh, interview on SGT report and this is hardcore evidence hyperinflationary collapse is coming this was back on August 21st but it's some very interesting analysis of the bond market and I'm gonna play a little bit of this and then comment uh, but you know let's circle back now and talk about the bond market blow-off phase mm -hmm. because if in the 80s the introduction of these unallocated gold and silver contracts short-circuited the bond market as David told us in the last interview and now we're approaching the bond market blow-off phase this will be the popping of the world's biggest bubble what is that going to mean for people what is it going to mean for the economy and what is it going to mean for the future of the United States if the <coughs> bond market blows up well, that's a, you're asking me a fundamental question, and I can give you an answer, but I think David would do a better job at that, and I'd, I'd like him to address that in, in a few minutes. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just play the cold technician, if, if you don't mind. Please. And, uh, but the, you mentioned the word blow-off, and you need to explain that. We need to explain that to your listeners. A blow-off is a situation in which a bull market that's aged, been going up for years, and certainly the bond market has, uh, suddenly decides to, instead of go up at it, the prior angle of ascent, and if you look at the bond chart that I've, I've provided you here, the top chart is a monthly bar chart of T-bonds going back to 2013, uh, excuse me, 2003. It goes back 13 years. It's T-bond futures. And you can see there's a, a line <clears throat> across the highs that basically every high since then, up until recently, has stopped at that angle of ascent and said, okay, that's enough for now, backed off, come back up again. 
But in about three or four months ago, T bonds closed over 170. This is futures closed over the price of 170, shot up to 177 pretty quickly the next month. It was last month. All that action is out above that line. It's a temper tantrum. It's a blow off. It's a, it's like a pressure cooker lid coming off. It's saying that demand is so aggressive now that we're just going to leave the earth. Well, markets never leave the earth for the long run. Sorry, By that the way, was the, sorry, Michael. That, that was the ten year that you're using as your benchmark. No, we're using the thirty year T bonds. Thirty year, okay. This yeah, market, is T bond futures, which are thirty years. Yeah, and you're but, saying markets always return to the mean, right? So we're not, we're not leaving planet Earth just yet. No, we're not going to leave planet Earth. And the mean in this case I'm using is a thirty six month average, which is a smooth three year average. Mm -hmm. And you can see it overlaid on the price chart. Uh, at its lows, the T bonds will almost always go back to the mean and drop oh, three or four, five percent below that 36 month and go up. So crossing the mean is not the issue here, but it is a unit of measurement against which we can oscillate the price action measure. Where, for example, is this month's high and low in price compared to that average? And then we plot that on the oscillator, which is the chart below the price chart, and you can see <clears throat> that since 2013, which the bonds were going down from uh, 2000. 12 through 2013, meaning rates were rising. Most bond analysts at that point, including uh, PIMCO, for example, were bearish on bonds, thought rates were on their way up. We, we got bullish on bonds in, in early 2014 because of quarterly momentum, which told us it was going up. That chart is not shown here. But from that point forward, so it's two and a half years now, an uptrend has developed in T-bonds. You can see it on the price chart. It includes the blow-off phase, which is circled on the top price chart, where we exceeded the roof, so to speak. The elevator came through the top of the building. Okay. Here's another visual picture. Momentum built a nice trend line as well, the price. Now, if you look at the price chart and you draw that line, and it incorporates quite a few lows going back two and a half years, it will break down if T-bonds drop below about 160, which is about 10 to 11 points below where the market is right now. But if you plot the momentum chart, it, it adjusts upward monthly too, as does the 36-month average, which is the mean against which we measure the bond price. It's going to break down about five or six points above the 160 level. So around 165 to 166, quite a bit higher than where the price chart breaks down, momentum is going to break a major uptrend line. Now, after having produced a blow-off phase, for a market to turn down is usually devastating because it's had a tantrum. It's, it, it's exhausted itself so badly that when it turns down, it's likely to find few buyers. It has sucked all the buyers off the page, and it turns down, it will find an absence of bidding until a deep level. And I'm going to suggest that, that deep level is between 135 and 140, which is quite a distance below the current market. That would equate to seeing price down around a uh, yield, excuse me, at 4% or higher right now long-term bonds are yielding about two and a quarter percent. That's quite a jump in yield. So what we're trying to measure right now at MSA is the violation of this long-term momentum trend line that's plotted on the momentum chart. It breaks it right now at about 165 next month, about 166, just up each month about a point. We're also measuring T-bonds via more intermediate trend metrics like a three-month average or, you know, and so forth. So we also look at it closer up and we'll have uh, more nearby signals that indicate a selling process has begun. But anyway, this is the big picture and it is ugly. And the primary reason it's ugly is the bonds had the temerity to produce the blow off. Now, if you saw the JGB, the Japanese government bond, uh, it has been in blow off for six months. So it's even more egregious. And it has now started down. It's, the JGB has already started the break. Uh, it has not yet broken its annual momentum structure, which is uh, around 150, 151 level, but it's trading just above 151 right now. So it's very close to breaking its annual momentum trend. And I, I lump together, by the way, the T-bonds in the U.S., the German Bund, and the JGBs. They all look equally vulnerable for a coincident sharp rise in rates drop in price. Uh, <clears throat> another factor that we need to look at is, well, if rates are going up, Where's the money going to go if the bond market is flushing itself out, if the stock market is going to be a victim of this, which it likely will be, where is it going? Well, we've already seen that gold turned up, and gold is usually a leader of commodities. It certainly was back in the late 70s by about a year. Uh, the next chart is the Bloomberg Commodity Index, and I do the same thing here. We have on the top of the page is the 
monthly price chart of the Bloomberg Commodity Index, which is a very representative sampling of the commodity asset category because they don't heavily weight energy in relation to the other commodities. Like, for instance, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index is very heavily weighted to energy and slights gold, corn, and things like that, for example. Uh, the momentum chart of the Bloomberg Commodity Index has a massive, massively clear downtrend structure that is not equally clear on the price chart, and we are there right now. The Bloomberg Commodity Index is trading right now at about 86 points. If you close out this month much above 87, that trend line that goes back to 2008 is a four-point downtrend line of momentum. It will break out. And if you break the commodity index out, coincident with the bond market breaking down, that is a statement that makes sense. It says that we're about to have commodity price inflation. Mm -hmm. the, the liquidity created by the central banks, instead of going into stocks as it has been, mm -hmm. is shifting. The river flow is shifting into commodities. Yeah, and gold has, already, gold has already told us that. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, with that. Okay, so just to explain this to you briefly, what he's doing is he's taking price charts and then he's taking a momentum chart of the price chart and he's drawing his trend lines on the momentum chart and that's what's telling him that we're about to have a bond market breakdown with a coincident stock market breakdown and with a gold market breakout based on those momentum charts. So is this going to happen? Well, I think something is coming really quick here with the election cycle. And this brings us to this Donald Trump story. Now, this is fascinating because this is playing right into that election cycle thing here. Trump really lays it on the line. And you can see here, Trump slams Yellen. The Fed has created a stock bubble and a false economy to boost Obama. Wow. He said it. Now, before we read that story, let's visit the debt to the penny. We've got 18.151 trillion in outstanding debt one year ago from September 1st, and we've got 19.481. So we're talking 1.3 plus trillion dollar deficit now. Um, that's the biggest we've seen in a long time. And that deficit is being purchased, that debt is being purchased by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, and as Trump says, it's Yellen now, the Federal Reserve is buying the debt that allows the government to spend more money than it takes in to transfer, it's not even a transfer really, because uh, traditionally, transfers were taking taxes from one group of people and transferring them to another but with a 1.3 trillion dollar deficit uh, they're transferring the money from the printing press to the recipients at least we're talking about a third to even a half of the revenues now are printed and that's the federal reserve printing money buying its buying the government's debt to fund this fake recovery and this is exactly what Trump says he comes right out and says it this is what he says one month ago Donald Trump urged his followers to sell stocks warning of very scary scenarios for investors and accused the Fed of setting the stage for the next market crash when he said that quote interest rates are artificially low during a phone interview with Fox Business the only reason the stock market is where it is is because you get free money. Earlier today, speaking to a reporter traveling on his plane who asked Trump about a potential rate hike by the Fed in September, Trump took his vendetta to the next level saying that the Fed is, quote, keeping the rates artificially low so the economy doesn't go down so that Obama can say that he did a good job. They're keeping the rates artificially low so that Obama can go out and play golf in January and say that he did a good job. It's a very false economy. 
We have a bad economy. Everybody understands that, but it's a false economy. The only reason the rates are low is so he can leave office and he can say, see, I told you. He then lashed out at Yellen, whom he accused of having a political mandate when conducting monetary policy. Quote, so far, I think she's done a political job. You understand that. On whether we can have a rate hike in September, well, the only thing that's strong is the artificial stock market. That's only strong because it's free money because the rates are so low. It's an artificial market. It's a bubble. So the only thing that's strong is the artificial market that they're created until January. It's so artificial because they have free money. It's all free money. When rates are low like this, it's hard not to have a good stock market, end quote. His conclusion, quote, at some point the rates are going to have to change, end quote. Indeed they will, and that's precisely what almost every bank from Goldman yesterday to City Today and many others in between have been warning about in recent months. Until recently, Trump's latest anti-Fed outburst would have been swept under the rug as just another example of the deranged ramblings of an anti-Fed conspiracy theorist. Trust us, we've been there. However, considering the spike in anti-Fed commentary in recent weeks coming from prominent and established institutional sell-side analysts all the way to the Wall Street Journal, it may be that Trump was once again simply saying what everyone else thought but dared not mention. There you go. That's the presidential cycle happening again. Let's go and isolate it just to the Dow 30. And you can see that back in 2008, if you remember back in 2008, George Bush Jr. was kind of a joke to the liberals and for the most part, the press. But it wasn't until we had this financial crisis, you can see the downtrend in the stock market that started right there in September of 2008. Actually, that one's saying June, but it was it was around September that the real decline started going into the election. I don't know if you remember the quote from George Bush Jr. who said that we need to destroy capitalism to save it. It was something like that. But after that point, he kind of became a joke, not only in the liberal side, mainstream media side, but also for conservatives. He just became kind of a joker. His presidency became ridiculous at that point. And are we seeing the same type of pattern happening uh, with Barack Obama? Is he going to be discredited in the same way that George Bush Jr. was or will it happen after the election? There are a lot of signposts now pointing to a coming collapse, a very, very severe change in markets. And uh, it, it's coming very, very quickly. It's going to be very exciting. So keep your eyes on it. And we'll talk to you next time.